Functions are a very key concept in math in general. So the SAT math section makes sure to test on them a lot. So today, we're going to look at functions in the most simple case, linear functions, to understand functions in general. As usual, let's start with an example. A factory produces plastic confetti poppers. Given x pounds of plastic confetti, the factory will have in stock f of x plastic confetti poppers at the end of the day. And we see here a function describing f of x. So before we dive into this example, let's talk about functions in general. Functions are key to a lot of concepts in mathematics, and they allow us to express ideas very powerfully in terms of mathematics. Now, put very simply, functions are just statements of input and output. We can think of it like a mysterious box. We throw our number in, and it spits one back out at us. This mystery box is our function. How it chooses the number to give back to us is defined by the function definition. Let's map out what a function looks like. Let's look at this in terms of our confetti popper function. The input is x, the pounds of plastic confetti, and the output is f of x, the number of confetti poppers in stock at the end of the day. The right hand side specifies the value of f of x given x. Say we plug in x equals 10, then f of 10 equals 800 plus 200 equals 1000, and we have 1000 confetti poppers in stock at the end of the day. This is an example of the most common type of question we'll be given about functions. Given an input, find an output. However, there are two other types of questions that we will often see about functions. The second is really the exact opposite. Given an output, find the corresponding input. The third is when we would be asked to interpret things about a function or understand functions represented through graphs or tables. So now, let's look at an example of that second type. Given an output, find an input. Suppose we were asked, if the factory had 1,800 confetti poppers in stock, how much plastic confetti did they start with that day? Well, 1,800 is the number of confetti poppers, not pounds of plastic. This is the value of f of x, and we were asked to find x. So how do we do so? Well, to do so, we simply plug into our function. Now we're given, in this case, that f of x equals 1,800, so we replace f of x with 1,800, and then we have an equation of x that we can solve. We do so, subtracting 200, dividing 80, and then we get simply x equals 200. So as I said before, there are three types of things we might be often asked about functions. Well, the third is to interpret something about them. So suppose we were asked the question, how many confetti poppers does the factory have in stock at the start of the day? Looking at our function, we see that this constant 200 does not depend on x. So if we were to look at the case of giving no plastic into the factory, then we would still end up with 200 plastic confetti poppers. This tells us that we have to start off the day with 200 poppers in stock. And so the answer is 200. Just like here we were asked to interpret something about a function, we might often be asked to interpret things about a function given data, not an explicit representation. Here, in this first example, we were given an explicit representation. Unfortunately, this will often not be the case, and sometimes we will need to decipher on our own what a function is doing, sometimes from tables and sometimes from graphs. Suppose we are given a very similar problem but presented differently. The problem reads, a factory turns plastic bags into recycled chairs. The table below shows how many chairs are produced given a number of pounds of plastic bags. Find a function representing how many chairs are produced given a number of pounds of plastic bags. So given that we're working with linear functions now, it's easy to expect that we will have a linear function describing the data. However, sometimes we might have to debate between things like quadratic or exponential or anything else. Let us now find this linear function. We're going to do this pretty quickly because it's not the focus of this video. So to start, we take our slope equation and plug in a couple of coordinate points. Now evaluating this out, we find that our slope is equal to 90. So throwing that into our y equals mx plus b, we get f of x is equal to 90x plus b for some b. And then we're going to next plug in a coordinate point to find the value of b, which is equal to 0, nicely in this case. So putting that together, we get that finally our function is f of x is equal to 90x. Now, again, if this felt a little quick for you, that's OK. You can watch our other video, Equations of Lines, to see it done much slower and in more detail. Lastly, we will often be asked to understand functions represented through a graph. 
Now, a different example from the previous two we saw, let's suppose we were asked the following question. We're asked here, what is the value of f of g of 2? Questions like this are asking us directly about function composition. To answer questions like these, we need to start by evaluating the inside function, in this case g of 2, taking that value and plugging it into f. So let's do that step by step. We need to start with g of 2. Now looking at a graph, we look at what does y equal when x equals 2. We find it's equal to 4. Now we take that value 4 and then we plug that back into f. So what is f of 4? Well, likewise, we use the same method, find f of 4 is equal to negative 2. So putting it all together, seeing it step by step, f of g of 2 is equal to f of 4, which is equal to negative 2. And we're done. We found our answer. So putting it together, we've looked at many different ways of understanding a function. Inputs, outputs, interpretations, representations as graphs and tables. These are all really important to understanding functions and doing well on them in the SAT. So with that, we are one step closer to SAT math mastery. Hope you liked the video. If you want to hear more and see what else we're up to, hit like and subscribe and see a new video coming up from Point Avenue every week. If you want to talk to us, hear more about what we're doing, or have any questions, email us at contact at pointavenue.com. Bye!